would help if I turned my mic on? Perfect. Good morning, and welcome to Morning Star Lutheran Church. No matter where you are or who you are, you are welcome here. As you can see, I am not Pastor John. However, he will be quarantining at home for this week and next, as there was a positive COVID case in his house. Our prayers are with him and his family. This morning, we remember our church member, Fred Smith, who passed away Tuesday at the age of 90. Our love and our prayers are with his family, his wife, Marita, his daughters, Denise, Diane, and Janet, and all his family and friends. Services will be held at a later time. There's a rose on our altar today as well. We welcome Mason Edward, born January 4th, to parents Tristan and Lauren Ely Durbin. We celebrate with these parents and older brothers, Caden and Grayson. Mason is the grandson of Morning Star members Charles and Verena Kirkland, and the great grandson of Rose and Rod Smith. For this, we celebrate. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. A reading from Romans. Do you not know all that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like this, like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Joined in Christ, in Christ, in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for this gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness and grace and love. To be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Today, as we remember our Lord's baptism, we also remember ours. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please join in singing our opening hymn, Christ, when for us you were baptized.
Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit so that we may follow after your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please hear our readings for this morning. Our first reading is from the first chapter of Genesis, a reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from the 19th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. A reading from Acts. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then Paul said, into what then were you baptized? And they answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven proclaiming, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. My friends, this is a very special Sunday, the Sunday we celebrate the baptism of our Lord Jesus. He was baptized 
not in a little fount like this, but in a river. We don't know how big the river was. Sometimes the River Jordan is just a trickle, and sometimes it is raging and crazy. But he was probably put his whole body underwater. It probably looked a little bit different than ours. But that's okay. Baptism is baptism. And when Jesus was baptized, God sent his spirit down to earth and said, this is my son, and I love him. He's awesome and super great. And you know what? When we are baptized, whether it's in a river and our whole bodies go underwater, or it's just a little sprinkle on our foreheads, the very same thing happens. God sends God's spirit down here, right here, to the font, to us and says, that is my kid, and I love them. They're awesome. They're great. It wasn't just Jesus that was baptized. It's all, all of us. And God has the same response to each and every one of us, that we are loved, that we're awesome, and that God will never forget us or abandon us. I think that's pretty neat. And I think it's also pretty neat that we are baptized with water because there's a lot of water on this planet. I'm not great at math, but I think it's something like 70% of our earth is covered in water where there's water in the ice at the poles. There's a lot of it. And we come into contact with a lot of water, whether it's in our showers or our baths, in our kitchens, we cook with water. In the summertime, we swim in water. We have, um, super soaker fights in our backyards. We run through sprinklers. We hike to see waterfalls. There's a lot of things that we do with water. And each and every time we come into contact with water, whether it's out in the rain, in your shower every day, drinking your however much water you're supposed to drink a day, you can remember your baptism each and every day and you can always make the sign of the cross on your forehead, on your siblings' foreheads, on your parents' foreheads, and remember that you are so loved by God. Let's pray. Good morning, good and merciful Lord. We are so grateful for you and for all of the water you give us. Help us to remember in the smallest times when we're taking a shower or when we get stuck in the rain, or when we're having squirt gun fights with our friends, that in that water is a promise that you will love us always, just as you loved your son, Jesus. And we are so, so grateful for that. And we love you. Help us to remember each and every time water touches our skin, that you will never leave us, never abandon us. You are an awesome God. It's in your name. We pray and play. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Baptism of Our Lord Sunday. I'm sorry that I can't be with you a bit more in person than I normally am. Uh, our family is continuing to uh, quarantine out of an abundance of caution. Uh, Kieran is still working off of his positive COVID result and um, Kristen Sophia and I will be tested later on today. And so hopefully by this weekend, we'll know what we are uh, dealing with and what we're facing and continuing our efforts to be safe and to take good care of each other. Thank you so much for your prayers and the way that you have reached out to me or to the family members and have expressed your support for us. Uh, I know that there are a lot of families going through much more difficult times. Uh, ours is simply uh, an inconvenience, uh, but we do so so that we can continue to be safe and keep staff members safe, and keep all of you at Morningstar safe. So we say thank you, and we also say we love you and miss you. Let's get to it. Today we celebrate the baptism of our, of our Lord Sunday. We hear from the Gospel of Mark the very brief story of Jesus' baptism in the Jordan River by John the Baptizer. And this is a wonderful story, even though it's short in verses, it's, it's neat to imagine, and it's neat to get a mental picture in our heads as to what was going on that day there in the Jordan River. 
if you have had an opportunity to be at the Jordan River in the Holy Land, you know that the Jordan River flows uh, from the Sea of Galilee in the north, which is really a very beautiful place. And then it kind of runs into the wilderness as it runs south and then runs into the Dead Sea, which is quite, you know, um, bleak and, and quite, uh, it's all stone and rock and, and there's not much vegetation that really grows. But the Jordan runs through that, that area between the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea. And where Jesus was most likely baptized uh, is kind of a um, out-of-the-way place. It's kind of in the middle of, you know, are you in the desert? Are you in the wild? Or are you on the edge of where the people are? It's kind of in that middle ground. And so for John to be preaching and teaching out there meant that people from Jerusalem, as it says in Scripture, had to go out to him. People from the region had to go find him. He wasn't at a common, you know, uh, intersection on the streets. He wasn't at a place where people already gathered. They had to go find him to hear his message of repentance, to be washed in the waters. Now, he was already baptizing people, but he was doing so to ritually cleanse them. He was, of course, announcing that the one who is to come, the one who is to follow, would be baptizing with the Holy Spirit. And that, John said, that makes all the difference in the world. So into this picture of, of John with his camel hair and with his uh, leather belt and, and his teeth filled with locust legs and wild honey bits, into this picture Jesus comes. And it's neat how Jesus is not really described, but he simply arrives. Jesus, the Son of Man, Jesus, the Messiah, Jesus, the Savior of the world. Of course, it's just been a couple weeks since we celebrated Christmas, so it's a a bit of a jarring um, development to have him go from infant holy, infant lowly, to full-grown 30-year-old man walking up to the, the Jordan River, but that's how it goes. Into this picture of John with his, with his exhortations to the crowd, Jesus comes. And we don't know if he snuck in. We don't know if John saw him from a distance. All we know is that Jesus walks into the Jordan River and is baptized by John, and when he comes up from the waters, the heavens are torn open and the Spirit descends upon him like a dove. And he hears the word of God, the voice of God saying, You are my son, you are the beloved, in you I am well pleased. Now that it's the middle of winter, and I know that down here in the south, it's the middle of winter is a little bit different than a lot of other places. But think about when the weather gets a little nicer, think about what it's like to go and visit the pool. Hopefully, the next time it's warm enough to be in a public pool, we can do so. But think about one of the nice things. I, I've kind of always enjoyed, um, you know, you get to the pool, and especially if it's not too crowded, and, and I'll do this occasionally um, because I'm not much of a swimmer, I'm more of a floater, and in this case, a sinker. And to be a good sinker, it's kind of neat because you get into the water and you hold your breath and you kind of go broop and you go down to the bottom. And I like that. I like when you're kind of down at the lower part of the pool and just kind of hang out. I guess I'd be a good alligator where you just kind of stay down there low. Alligator, eh, maybe that's too aggressive. Manatee, I'd make a good manatee where you just kind of stay low, let the water wash over you a little bit slowly, slowly, and you float. And you kind of, all the sounds, you know, are muted, especially if there's not very many people in the water with you. But everything that's happening up above on the surface surface is, is, is kind of, you know, it's, it's distant now. And that's kind of nice. I wonder what it was like for Jesus to be under the water in the Jordan River. Did he have a moment of peace? Did he have a moment of contemplation about what was going to happen? Did he know, of course he knew, that the heavens would open, but was he looking forward to seeing this and experiencing this? Of course he did. And then Jesus rises up from the water, and the heavens are open, torn apart, it says, and the Holy Spirit comes upon him like a dove, and he hears the voice of God. Think about all that happened in that moment from when Jesus was under the water where it was a little more quiet, to when he came up from the waters 
and began to began to live into to receive the whole power of his baptism. It's amazing to me to even think about what it must have been like for Jesus to go from the quietness of the water to the opening of heaven and the reception of the Holy Spirit and to hearing the word of God, the voice of God. From the silence to the voice of God. What a change that is. But when you hear the voice of God say, you are my beloved, you are you are my beloved son, and you I am well pleased. I think sometimes in this in this life, and especially in the recent days and months and years that we've experienced, um, sometimes we might prefer a little bit of silence. After the news of this past week of all the uproar and the the violence and the terror that we've been seeing on the news and the terror that people have been experiencing, the upset that people have been experiencing in their normal lives. Sometimes I think we'd prefer, we'd prefer to be silent or to hear nothing. To just kind of be on the bottom of the pool, you know, at the bottom of the river. Just, can I be where it's quiet? Can I be where it's calm? But we can't do that, can we? And God knows that. We can't just stay forever hidden. Because in this world, we have to walk on the streets. We have to keep our jobs. We have to, you know, kids need to continue to go to school. Teachers need to continue to teach. Uh, you know, administrators need to keep work. All those things that we wish we just, could we just take that away for a while? We can't. But the promise that we celebrate on the baptism of our Lord Sunday is that the same baptism that Jesus received you and I have received also. And the same voice of God that says to Jesus, you are my beloved, with you I am well pleased, is the same voice of God and the same Holy Spirit that came to you and to me when we were baptized. Whether we remember it or not, the voice of God spoke to you and said, you are my beloved in you. I am well pleased. This is the gift that helps us to not feel so tempted to stay where it's silent, under the waters, under the covers, safely behind our keyboards of our laptops, or safely, you know, ensconced in our, our, our list of things that we haven't watched on DVR. And so we're just going to do that instead of facing the world around us. Sometimes when we're worried about what we're going to hear when we kind of surface at work or surface in life, on Facebook, remember that when Jesus re-entered re the world, of came out of the water, the first thing he heard was God's voice. And then Jesus got to work. Jesus' ministry, especially in the Gospel of Mark, begins with baptism. Mark felt that everything that was to follow needed to start in the water of baptism and with the word of God saying, this is my son, this is the beloved, in you, in him, I am well pleased. It begins for Jesus in baptism. For you and for me, life as a child of God begins at baptism. And so for us now, we, like I said, whether we remember it or not, whether baptism was eight years ago or 58 years ago or 88 years ago, now we can come into the world knowing that we are not alone, knowing that we are not forgotten, knowing that we are not cut adrift because God has claimed us. And God has said, you, you are my child. And it is into this, this world so full of chaos and craziness and pain and selfishness and sinfulness, whether it's of our own making or that which we suffer because of someone else's doing, it's into this world, into this our experience, that the voice of God declares us 
beloved. I need to sit with that for a little bit because this is what's going to keep me going. This promise that I've received in baptism and the promise you've received in baptism is going to be the thing that lets us walk into this world with all its difficulties. I think about the way that our congregation has continued to minister and to be disciples in the midst of this COVID epidemic. The way that you have shown me what it means to be a disciple by caring for others, by reaching out to those less fortunate than we, by, by, by looking for those who are often forgotten, by trying to expand your understanding of, of justice, by trying to expand your ideas and understanding of discipleship, you are living into your baptismal promise as a beloved child of God. And it's been wonderful for me to see. And I can't tell you how proud I am of you. That when you have faced times and experiences and challenges that really do make you want to cover up your head, go back under the covers and call it a day. Instead, you've come up out of the waters. You've come up out of the bed. You've come up out of your, your, your comfy spot on the couch and you have walked into this world. That's what it means to be a disciple. The first thing Jesus did when he was baptized after the waters rolled off his body, he was off into the wilderness to show the devil who was in charge and it wasn't the devil. So it is we are called as baptized children of God to, as the waters roll off us, walk into this world and be faithful even when we are challenged, to be faithful even when we are frightened, to be faithful even when the world says, think of yourself first. But instead we say, as a beloved child of God, I need to love my neighbor as myself. I need to face a world that is broken with love and compassion, even if my, my, my human instinct says to, to lash out, to yell, to berate, to strike out. Instead, we build up relationships that are based on, on, on forgiveness and mercy. We build relationships that are based on understanding and love. And we realize that although the waters are the sometimes the most calm and peaceful places to be, the ministry of a disciple is out there in the world. It's out where the, the voices are loud and the struggle is real. But we remember always that the voice of God goes with us. You are my beloved. The Holy Spirit that has been given to us in baptism does not leave us at the font or at the riverside, but rather walks with us no matter where we go. And that's what I need to hear. I bet you do too. So as we celebrate the baptism of our Lord Sunday this day, we also celebrate the baptism that we each have received. And we open that gift up and share that gift, that invitation to all those around us because this is how, this is how lives are changed. This is how the world becomes more of what God wishes it to be. So happy baptismal day to you, to your loved ones, to this world. We walk together as God's children. Amen. Let us continue now with our affirmation of faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray together. Guided by Christ, 
made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, for the world, and for all who are in need. For the church throughout the world and its leaders that guided by the Holy Spirit, they proclaim the forgiveness of sins, the grace, the mercy, and the peace of Christ. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For wilderness and water, wind and wild beasts, and all living things on earth, that God's goodness is revealed through creation and that we may be faithful stewards to care for all that God has made. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For the nations of the world and their leaders, for our country as we navigate division and transition, for laborers busy both day and night, and for peacemakers amid strife, that God may inspire all people to use their strength wisely. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the sick and those who provide medical care, for the imprisoned and those who show them mercy, for the lonely and those who provide companionship, for all who suffer, we pray today for the family of Fred Smith, for Marita, Denise, Diane, and Janet as they grieve. And we pray that God may show compassion on all. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For the congregation gathered virtually, for students returning to school, for those seeking renewal in their daily work, that all the beloved of God experience grace and peace. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their labors, that their witness inspire us in our baptismal vocations. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent. For the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we prepare to celebrate communion together. As a deacon, a minister of word and service, I am not able to preside at the table. However, these elements that we will share together through the Holy Meal have been consecrated by Pastor John, actually on Christmas Eve. So we look forward to sharing the meal together shortly. Let us continue. Gathered here at this table, we remember with great thanksgiving that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. This is the supper of our Lord Jesus Christ. The same bread and cup were shared in community with our community of faith on Christmas Eve. They are here and given for you. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, as the Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
beloved. Here is bread, here is the wine, here is Jesus given for each of us. Come and be fed. We invite everyone at the conclusion of our worship service to come and drive through. Uh, you may then receive the meal of communion together as we share our time through our fed and um, feed and be fed Sunday morning drive through. If you would like to receive grape juice or gluten free wafers, please just ask and uh, you will receive those when you come. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, at this table we have feasted on your very life, and we are strengthened for the journey. Send us forth from this banquet, nourished in body and in spirit, to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. As we just shared, it is our second Sunday. It's a busy time here, and all are welcome. Uh, after the conclusion of worship, you may drive through and we will be collecting canned goods for the Matthews Help Center. Uh, we have communion to share with all. We have a special home blessing kit if you would like to receive one for your family. And um, for those folks who had children in the pageants, you may also pick up, um, for folks who had children in the pageant, you may pick up your pageant ornaments as well when you drive through. We look forward to seeing you soon. Uh, as next Sunday, our Sunday School Zoom class will resume at 9.30 a.m. We will uh, be exploring some ideas for how to celebrate the Martin Luther King Day of Service together at home and in our communities. Uh, we look forward to spending that time together. And let us uh, begin our sending hymn, number 673, God Whose Almighty Word. Strengthen you, 
May Jesus, the beloved, fill you, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.